morning and welcome to beginning the day with God, coming and going on Friday the 15th of December. We are now well and truly in the season of Advent, a time when we as Christians think of Jesus coming. His presence and encouragement is what gets us going. A world that was paralysed with fear and anxiety before he came found freedom of heart and freedom of action through his presence and encouragement, and that freedom is with us still. We opened our worship this morning with a piece of music entitled Lighten Our Darkness by Keith Duke. Lord Jesus Christ, we have come here to worship you in this glad season of Advent, a season of expectation, of celebration, and above all, of preparation. We come before you now and ask you to help us be ready, to give thanks for your coming, to recognise the ways you come to us now, and to welcome you when you come again. Open our hearts as we worship you, so that all we share may give us a deeper understanding of this season and a fuller understanding of your love. Amen. In Advent, we wait for you. God the Maker, Jesus the Storyteller, Holy Spirit of Life. In Advent, we cry for you. God of Justice, Jesus of Bethlehem, Holy Spirit of Hope. In Advent, we long for you. You, God, are our love, our warmth, our light. Amen. This morning, three short readings from the New Testament. A reading first from the letter to the Romans. Timothy, my co-worker, greets you. So do Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, my relatives. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother Cortus greet you. And now a reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. The churches of Asia send greetings. Aquila and Prisca, together with the church in their house, greet you warmly in the Lord. All the brothers and sisters send greetings. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Finally, a reading from the letter to the Philippians. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The friends who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of the Emperor's household. All of those are greetings Paul includes at the end of his letters. Thanks be to God. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, and Jesus, who is called Justice, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you, always wrestling in his prayers on your behalf. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters at Laodicea and Nympha and to the church in her house. From Colossians chapter 4. And from Philemon. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you. And so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas and Luke, my fellow workers. Now a reflection. While there is no suggestion that Paul sent Christmas cards, 
there is no doubt he liked greeting people by name. <clears throat> also, he did not write separately to everyone, but in his writings to various churches, he liked to pick out special people. Sometimes this was because they were his fellow workers and the people getting his letter would have known who they were. Sometimes Paul picks out a name to remind the recipient of his duties, but equally he gives special mention of his gratitude to two at least of the women who gathered churches in their homes. That sounds strange to us, but in lands then occupied by the pagan Romans, there were no church buildings, and it was always up to someone to say, you are welcome to gather in my house for the breaking of bread. In times of persecution, that invitation could be both generous and highly dangerous. <clears throat> By this time in Advent, most of us will have made up our minds about Christmas cards for this year. Some will have decided not to bother sending any, which can be a worthy decision, or it can be less than worthy. Truly, anyone who has allowed the number they send each year to increase and multiply till it becomes a real burden, exhausting as well as costly, could be justified in not sending any cards. Sometimes people have done that and then get grumbles from relatives or people who usually get a card. People choose different ways to avoid sending cards. For example, by putting a notice in the paper stating, we will not be sending any cards this year. Or, we are paying instead for a number of goats to be presented where needed on your behalf. Other practical options are also available. A simpler option is to cut down the number of cards to be sent, perhaps by restricting the list to close family and friends. It's possible to make homemade cards to an ultra-simple pattern or to send simple greetings by email, which cannot be put on anyone's mantelpiece, but which is as genuine as Paul's greetings. Lord, my heart is not large enough. My memory is not good enough. My will is not strong enough. Take my memory and give it a quicker recall. Take my will and make it strong. And make me conscious of thee, ever present, ever accompanying. Amen. Believing the promises of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God of Advent and of waiting times, we know both darkness and light. We live with it and in spite of it, and we give you thanks for the gifts of night time and the daytime, the light time and the dark time. Amen. The wonderful Counselor guide you, the mighty God protect you. The everlasting Father be with you. The Prince of Peace inspire you. And the blessing of God be upon you, now and evermore. Amen. Light of the darkness, as he 